Hi, my name is Elisa Rod. I work as the Research Data Management Specialist at McGill University, which is located on the unceded traditional lands of the Ganyankahaga, a place which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange for many First Nations. I recognize and respect the Ganyankahaga as the traditional custodians of the lands and waters within the Montreal community. I honor the Ganyankahaga today by recognizing them in order to break the cycle of colonization and the continued erasure of Indigenous peoples. As part of this acknowledgement, I'm taking time to learn more about the history of the area where I live and work, the role of my institution in the colonization of this area, and the ways that both higher education institutions and disciplines like data visualization and information science create and perpetuate harm to Indigenous peoples. I encourage you to join me in exploring ways to support Indigenous peoples near your home and workplace and through the work that you do. This section will cover different types of data visualizations and provide some examples of the most common types. The next few slides will review bar, pie, line, scatter, and box plots. While this presentation will touch on mapping, there are entire fields, including cartography and GIS, devoted to these topics. Bar charts are effective at communicating data because we tend to be good at comparing lengths. They present categorical data with rectangular bars with heights proportional to the values that they represent. Some variations include stacked bar charts where different parts of a category are stacked on top or side by side in a single bar, or grouped bar charts where different parts of a category are represented in side by side but separate bars. Some best practices for a bar chart include having horizontal axis labels so they are easier to read, having bars sorted by length or some other logical order, having a simple color scheme that highlights certain bars strategically, and having an axis that starts at zero and ends at a natural point. Stacked bar charts, which were covered a couple slides ago, can be useful, but they make it difficult to compare categories in the middle. Grouped bar charts can be confusing when bars within a series are spread out. Small multiples are an effective way to represent categorical data because they, are a they use a common axis that allows trends to be compared. Also, just one note that bar charts are really meant for data where the data categories are discrete. For example, like for variables such as country or university that are categorical. It is inappropriate, it is in inappropriate to use a chart type that is designed for continuous data, like a line chart, which uses a line to indicate continuity from one point to the next for categorical data. Pie charts are another very popular chart type. A pie chart is a circle that is divided into slices to illustrate numerical proportions. While popular, they are often criticized because it can be difficult to compare proportions. Some best practices for pie charts include only using them if you have a limited number of data points, for example, five at the most. They are not an effective chart option when the data points are very similar to each other. And they make the most sense if the data are parts of a whole and they should always total 100%. Sort the pie wedges in a natural ordering, such as from largest to smallest. Line charts include data points called markers that are connected by straight line segments. They work best when representing continuous data, such as time or temperature. Some variations include area charts or stacked area charts, where the space under the line or lines are filled in. Some best practices for line charts include labeling the lines directly when possible. It can be difficult to connect lines up to the legend entries based only on color and style. It is also a best practice to limit the number of different colors and line styles used in a single chart. If data are distributedly, distributed unevenly over the measurement scale, please add markers to the line to be explicit about where there are data points. Be cautious with stacked area charts. It is difficult to interpret the changes to inner categories against a moving baseline. A simple line chart is often easier to read. One note is that line charts should not be used to connect discrete categories. For example, for variables like country or university that are categorical, it is inappropriate to use a chart type that is designed for continuous data, like a line chart, which uses a line to indicate continuity from one point to the next. 
some note, a note, one note about um, creating line charts in Excel. In Excel, if you use the line chart chart type, you may get a categorical or text axis for the X or horizontal axis, which spaces data out evenly. If you have gaps in your data for that axis, for example, if you have data that are measured over time, but if you don't have data for each year, the chart will distort the rate of change in the data. The chart on the right was created in Excel, but it uses the scatter plot chart type instead with the variation that adds a line between the points. Note how having both lines and points really emphasizes where the data points are and where there are gaps. A scatter plot is a type of bivariate plot of two continuous variables. There can be many y values or, or dependent values for each independent or x value. You may see them with a trend line that doesn't connect the points, but tries to communicate a general trend, typically linear. Some types of bubble charts are a variation of scatter plots. Some best practices for scatter plots include to avoid overplotting, which means that too many dots or markers are stacked on top of each other. In order to avoid this, use transparency or aggregation, for example, a spatial histogram or a binned scatter plot to make it clear how much data you have. Do not allow points to fall directly on the axis, on either the X or the Y axis. So include some visual padding or change your axis limits so the points fall completely inside the chart and are vi fully vis visible against the background. For example, this can mean including some white space. If using size to represent a numerical value, make sure the chart maps the number to the area of the bubble instead of the diameter or radius. If using color to represent either numerical or categorical data, review guidelines on appropriate use of color in, visualiza in visualizations. Box plots are another common type of chart that show the variability in measure between groups. They are a plot that covers the distribution of data, such as a histogram. These type of plots uh, should be sorted in a natural ordering, for example, based on a central tendency such as the median. It is not a good practice to remove outliers unless you make a note of it. It is also a good practice to offer textual explanations of the box plot if the audience may not have seen them before. Maps are geographic representations of data. You can store the data as pixels or in tabular format, such as in a spreadsheet. You have to be careful to avoid distortion of data points when creating maps. Some best practices for maps um, include designing maps to show a geospatial pattern. If the patterns in your data are not tightly tied to a location, a map may not be appropriate. Unlike most charts, the most common way maps display data is through color. Review guidelines on appropriate use of color in visualizations if you have questions about how to determine the use of color for maps. Maps that use color inside a geographic region, otherwise called a choropleth map, can give large regions additional visual impact. Sometimes using a smaller geographic subdivision can help with this. If you need to use a large subdivision and the map is overemphasizing the impact of large states or countries, consider using a proportional symbol such as a bubble, in, a bubble type of map instead. Comparisons across maps can be very difficult. If you want to show a correlation between two numbers, a scatter plot may be more effective than trying to compare two or more maps. When picking a chart type, there are, there are many um, considerations that may come into play. We have covered some of the most common chart types, but there are many more. The data visualization catalog lists different types of charts along with their functions. You can also browse different types of charts by function, which can be useful if you're not sure where to start. There are a few other chart choosers that may be helpful. For example, the qualitative chart chooser in particular can be useful when you're not working with quantitative data. This video is part of a series of lectures recorded to teach about basic data visualization concepts.
It was designed by members of the Visualizing the Future Symposia project and was made possible in part by a national forum grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. This content is designed to be used freely. See the video description for more information about this lecture series and the Visualizing the Future Symposia project.